Come with us, ladies and gentlemen. Let's take a trip back in time to the time of the dinosaurs, six thousand years ago, after God created Earth. Uh, we're gonna, we're gonna, we're gonna throw some chairs at Turok. Not the not the 2015 one, no, the 1997 <laughs> one that was recently re-released, uh, help ported by uh, Night Dive Studios and Mr. Sticky Icky Butts, uh, Mr. Ryan C. Gordon. It's developed on the Kex engine. They're doing it all for the Kex, and you can pick it up for around 50, not 20, 20 of your local particular stinky currencies. Um, we 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 bought this ourselves because this was on sale for five bucks, and yeah, go go play. We're gonna play some Turok. Um, so this is this is chair acquisition. This is the new and improved chair QA edition. Look at all those beautiful little icons. Where we take a game and we, 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 we this is a multi-part thing. We we break it down. We have we we cover does it launch the performance, the graphics, and the control. We give it a score from one to four chairs based on that. And we have the fun section where we give it a more ambiguous, loosely defined chair rating based on how we thought it felt. How we what well, how what we, we thought, thought it game, felt. Yes. What how we thought game <laughs> yes. what blame blah blah blah. So let's uh let's kick this off. Uh starting with the the, the default assumed Linux Ubuntu. How as as it runs? Ubuntu, latest and greatest 1804 LTS and Ryzen 7 980 powered box of business right here, putting all the pixels in your face. How does it launch? Uh, no problems on that. It runs out of the box coming from Mickey Butts. I kind of expected it. Uh, performance on that 980. I tested it at 1080p and 2160. It's locked at 60. So, yeah, no problems there. It's not going to slow down. It fucking better not. Uh, this is based on the N64 port, if you're wondering more about that later. Graphics, I kind of knew something was off. If you're looking at the video right now, you're like, something's off. If you played it like I did way back when, when 3DFX version, you're like, where there's a fucking fog, Brad? Um, yeah, apparently you can cut that back on. It's not on by default. Uh, controls, it's was man. Uh, it works out of the box with a Steam controller. Bonus soda on that. So I can run this thing straight down, clean bill of health, four green checky mark chairs, all up in its face. Yeah, uh, Fedora 2864-bit with the i7-6700K and the GTX 1080Ti. Yeah, it has a bit of uh, problems with the Steam beta on the with the Steam overlay. If you have it enabled, you get some random shader exception. Um, no one posted anything about that on the interblag side. And I, I was about to give up, and then I thought, wait a second, let's, let's just turn off the overlay, see how that works. And uh, lo and behold, the game is 100% playable once you do that. So it doesn't get that one chair. Um, Performance-wise, I mean... Here's the thing. The N64 dev kits were like SGI Octane workstations and significantly more powerful than the N64 itself and some of the performance issues in this game. I, I don't think that's the case anymore. We, we're, 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 we're way past that point in hardware land. I think we're good. Um, graphics. I actually like the lack of fog. Uh, I thought it, I th actually thought it was kind of annoying in the original Turok, and I'm glad. Because you babies, you never experienced <laughs> the real version. I played it on the Nintendo 64. Like back I in said. You babies. Uh, you're, you, you fetch me a nipple, motherfucker. Change my diaper. Wipe my ass. Um, yeah. Uh, otherwise, it's like the same chunky 1997 goodness. Uh, control wise, it doesn't actually require an N64 controller to play, so I immediately hate it. No, it's fine. Uh, it's Waz, this first person shooter. It's what you expect. No real surprises there. So, with the exception of a weird Steam overlay bug, which stops you from playing the game with the Ariel controller if you are so inclined. Yeah, I'd give it three chairs for the functions. What about on Solus for those who are yes. uh, more gingerly inclined? Yeah, so on Solus, uh, with the Steam beta, it launches just fine with the overlay enabled. Uh, I also noticed that it's uh, locked at 60 FPS, regardless of whether or not you have VSync on. So... That was a thing. I, mean, I wasn't really looking forward to seeing like 3,000 FPS uh, while playing the game, but you know, it would have been interesting to see nonetheless. Uh, the graphics, uh, they do give you an option to disable the extend draw distance, which brings back the fog. How the game's and, supposed and, to look. Yeah, it. Um, another option that they give you is to disable camera bobbing. <laughs> And you can disable camera bobbing whether you're just walking forwards, whether you're uh, strafing. You can control all of that, and it's yeah, no, it it's so much better. Oh, that's so much better. <laughs> now controls. This is a game from 1997, and they allow you to rebind 
all the keys and you get some uh, mouse sensitivity sliders. So over here, as far as I'm concerned, on uh, Solus 3.999999, uh, uh, well, along with the uh, Ryzen 5 1600 and the GTX 1080, it gets uh, four chairs. <laughs> All right, well, that, there you go. Uh, three chairs on Fedora, four chairs on Solus, and Ubuntu. Let's move on to the fun section. Hmm. Ben, do you All have right, fun? Uh, check this out. One thing you might have noticed if you're watching the video version is uh, a thing that was done in the 90s because 3D was new hotness, and they're like, fuck it, everything's a platformer. Why is this an issue with Turok, you might ask yourself? Turok ain't got no damn feet. That's one of the big fucking <laughs> issues right there. There's a small problem with that. Um, Preach it, Boxy. <laughs> I'm just saying, man. Most of the graphics you're looking at them for N64, they do scale up quite nicely. The sounds, fuck no, they don't, man. Anything that's sampled, like a voice sample, is like scratchy bad. Um, but you're not playing this for the audio majesty, man. Uh Something, you know, added for the N64 version was clearly aim assist. I didn't remember this shit. And it's fucking wonderfully bad. I love it. You, you don't... I don't remember the Humvee. Um, you, you just kind of fart in the enemy's general direction and it'll hit them. It kind of sucks some of the fun out of the game because no precision is required. Uh, that's definitely a thing, man. It's primitive as shit, man. 100%. But... As Pedro pointed out in his stream, great fucking level design, enemy fucking placement. There's gotchas in there. Like still today, you're like, whoa, shit, motherfucker. All right, I got it. And you get up to one place, then you're getting capped. And it's just laid out and it keep well paced. Think like way before Half-Life 2 pacing, Half-Life 2 pacing. It mm -hmm. keeps you going through that. Um, here's the thing, though. Uh, unless you have like a raging nostalgia boner, I'm going to have to say... Uh, Keep your distance from this business unless it's on sale. Now, if you're like me and you played the original with your 3D effects pass-through card, maybe you had a Voodoo tube back then, whatever, you probably didn't pay fucking 20 bucks for it then. <laughs> this isn't the PC version. This is the N64 version. And uh, it's currently $5. That's kind of what I think it should be from a game from 1997, uh, not yeah, 20 you can, you can get you can get the double pack for like ten, I think. Exactly, I think I paid like ten or twelve dollars for this in part two, which is coming to Linux, isn't that right, Ryan? Supposedly. Um, sure is. Give me some mayonnaise. That's right, baby. Let's make those grilled cheese sandwiches. And uh, Pedro seems to think because the original ROM on the N sixty four was eight megs. This thing clocks in at like two hundred and forty something megs. And you said it's all the music folder. Oh, yeah, it is, because if you go into the game folder and you right-click on it, it's mm -hmm. 221 megabytes. All right. <laughs> I had fun with it. I mean, this is, like, the first time in a long time, the fun I had with it was dicking around and, like, synapses and neurons and shit going, like, I remember this. Remember before we got old? Yeah, and had responsibilities and shit. Oh, yeah, good times. That happened. And uh, the N64 cheat codes work. I looked those up and I was like, it has disco fuck around mode. So good on that. Uh, I, I would just say solid three on this. Uh, unless you're paying the fucking iron price for it. Then uh, I don't know about that. Jordan. Yeah, I mean, it's it's Turok. I played it back in like 1999 on a rented N64 cartridge from Blockbuster. <laughs> and it's still pretty solid after all these years. I mean... This Turok never really did anything particularly revolutionary. It's just a fairly well designed game, like was said before. Uh, the, level, the level design is solid. The enemy placement is good. There's uh, lots of areas to explore. Lots of secrets. Remember secrets and secrets and mm -hmm. shooters, man. Where you nope. get, like, oh, where the where the fuck am I? Oh, hey, secret unlocked. Um, yeah, the, there's there's a lot of like ammo management stuff in here as well. Just because you have, you suck at shooting, then you will run out of bullets really quick. Um, and yeah, it, it's a, it's an older game, so you get things like the enemies are super vulnerable to circle, circle strafing. Dumb but, as bricks. I mean, yeah, <laughs> yeah. I mean, I mean, but again, I can't really fault it for being a game from 1997. That's not it's not the fault of the game at all. Um, it's I mean, it's not. Here's the thing. It's nice that we can play N64 games on modern hardware. Um, if you're and yeah, if you're if you're a PlayStation kid back in the day, then. 100% yeah go check this out if it's on sale and reasonably priced because you missed out on a relatively fun shooter where you can go murder dinosaurs and time travelers and robots and the occasional Humvee 
So <laughs> yep. Yeah, um, you get to go to the sub world. The, the, the one, one thing I really do like about Turok is that they actually do give you like a reason to backtrack because there is stuff that like you'll see it and you're like, I can't get to this right now. I got to figure out how to fucking do this. And there's and a lot it, of shit that is in there. Then you're like, I should get it. And some of it's just red herrings too, man. Yeah. They're oh, not yeah. above that. Yeah. Oh yeah. No, th- 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 this is like classic 90 shooter, right? The, this, um, this is, um, it's, 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 it harkens back to that. So if you were, if you were a fan of it back in the day, then a hundred percent, you will enjoy it. Um, though I'm like, I said, or like Vince said, I'm not really sure about the value add here. If you played it already, uh, you, you might, you might get some jollies, but you're not going to get $20 worth of jollies. Um, yeah, I'll, I'll give it a solid three. It's, it's a fun shooter. I, I enjoyed it. it I enjoyed playing it. And it's for all the reasons that have already been described, old school first person shooters always have that timeless, uh, feeling of fun about them. Uh, none of the RPG elements, uh, forced story bits, pointlessly taking control away from you to show a cutscene, or even the sense that there is only one way to progress and no point in backtracking. Okay, if we're being honest, uh, Two Rock does do a little bit of the, uh, yeah, we're going to just take away control away, uh, we're just going to take control away from you, there we go, English properly, uh, <laughs> and to show you that Two Rock is picking up a key and it really looks like he's drinking something from the key, but Prompt whatever. Juice. It's, uh, yeah, I guess this was the game that introduced that particular, um, of, um, I don't know faux par, whatever you want to call it. It's, I don't know. It's, uh, I like it. I like it a lot. But that said, it's, it's just so much fun. It's, it is good to see a game from 1997 that still holds up to this day. Sure. The graphics look like crap. The music is not all that great, but it is a fun game, and it keeps you playing, and it's like, oh, it's actually, you know, once you get into the groove, you're actually, it's it's very hard to put down, so as far as I'm concerned, it gets three chairs. Hey, man, uh, we get a solid three all the way down. I don't know. Oh, yeah. I, I think maybe after I sit on it for a little while, because it is very, very difficult. This is like a genuine shit I'm old moment of going, mm-hmm. fuck. There's some people like, this is a retro game. And I distinctly remember like thinking it'll never look better than this. Mm-hmm. I, I, I think, like, I think bas- basically the, the rule is now, if you can remember seeing it in a blockbuster aisle, it's a retro <laughs> game. <laughs> See, legit. When Quake 2 came out, it's like, oh, the graphics look so good. Right. And, 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 then, and then we go and bitch about Tomb Raider. Yeah. Next yeah. game cast. <laughs> also, uh, I think I want to throw in point because I remember, you know, Pedro's like, how come indie games can't do this type of level to look at what the budget was for this? That's probably why. Yeah. yeah. A little bit different. KK. And indeed. <laughs>